Lebanon's 14-month-old national unity government collapses after 11 opposition ministers resign. A crisis in the making, will there be another lengthy political deadlock? Is the Hariri Tribunal likely to cause more damage to the country? What's the future of Lebanon? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm James Bays, and today we've taken the programme here to the streets of Beirut. A lot of traffic here, people on their way home after a day's work, many of them, I think, on their car radios, late, listening to the latest political news, the latest political crisis in this country. The government has collapsed. The Prime Minister has been asked for the time being to stay on as the caretaker Prime Minister. What's the future now for Lebanon? Much of the focus right now is on this country's president. Here, hosting Prince Albert of Monaco, Michel Sleiman's role is not just ceremonial. He must try and find a way out of this crisis and will soon start consulting MPs about who should form the next government. Analysts believe there could be weeks, if not months, of political deadlock ahead. It doesn't directly lead to escalation or necessarily risk of violence in the streets. Uh, it is directly going to lead and has led to the beginning of an open-ended political crisis uh, uh, relating to the formation of, of an alternative government, of a new government. So I think we're in the beginning of a months-long phase uh, uh, in, a, in attempts to form a new government which will, which will take a very long time. The situation is causing concern across the region. Lebanon is a place where divisions have spiralled out of control many times in the past. We have uh, a direct interest in the stability in Lebanon. And we are not going to stay put uh, until the uh, situation gets back to its normal course. The last time Lebanon was rocked by violence was almost three years ago. Over 80 people died in just a few days. But on the main street where many of the battles took place, there is for now little concern. I think uh, things will be settled down and it's an opinion against an opinion. And I am relaxed. Just to see, I'm drinking coffee. And... I'm not worried at all. At Why all. Why not? I'm not. I am sure uh, nothing will happen as uh, security-wise. Lebanese will tell you that over the past few months, this crisis has played out almost in slow motion. Everyone knew it was coming, but no one was able to stop it. Now, with the collapse of the government, this country is in uncharted waters. Well, we'll start our discussion with our guests in just a moment. But first, I wanted to get the insight of Al Jazeera's ruler, Amin, our correspondent here, who covers the ins and outs of the situation here every single day. You've been covering, covering Lebanon for a long time. What's your view? How serious is this crisis? It's a very serious crisis, and it's only the beginning. But I think so far, it's been contained. The reaction from the Hezbollah and the opposition has been measured, and so is the case by Prime Minister Hariri and his allies. Now, you heard those people on the street speaking to me earlier on. They said they didn't think there would be violence now. What's your take on that? Do you think this country with such a violent past can avoid bloodshed again? I think for now there won't be any violence, but only for now. For further on along the road, nobody can guarantee that there won't be any violence. The rhetoric is very strong and tensions are high and it's going to be hard for anyone to control it and make sure that it won't spin out of control. Rula, thank you very much. Now let's continue the conversation and we're joined by our guests today. First we have Salah al Maknouk. he's also here in Beirut, he's a lecturer of political science and a columnist for Lebanon's Daily Star newspaper. And with us too, the political analyst, Kamal Wazni. What I want to start by doing is ask you about that point that Rula just mentioned, each of you, uh, which is about the current situation right now, a snapshot of where we are now. How bad is the situation and is there a threat of violence? Can I start with you, Kamal Wazni? Obviously, there is no threat of violence, but we are at a very bleak situation moment in his, in Lebanon. Obviously, the government of Saad al-Hariri has collapsed, and the opposition, they were very fast 
uh, when the agreement that's supposed to be signed or agreed be between Syria and Saudi Arabia, brokered by them, to take a place, uh, the American involvement uh, put a blockage on that agreement, and that led to the withdrawal of the minister from the government. We don't know where we're going from now. For, uh, it's a lot of uh, stories going on, but obviously Lebanon at a critical point has no government, and Saad al-Hariri is weaker today than he was a couple days ago. Mr. Uh, al Maknouk, can I ask you your view on this? Uh, we heard that comment there that violence isn't likely, but there are a lot of guns in this country and it has a very violent history. Can it be ruled out? Absolutely not. I think uh, the presence of Hezbollah's weapons and the past experience over the five years has shown us clearly that the Lebanese people are under a constant threat of the use of violence against them for political purposes. Now, it might seem clear for a lot of people in the world that the problem today is a problem of the political system of the government in Lebanon. As a matter of fact, this is not the case. Since 1943, since our independence, we have had 220 political assassinations. Since 2005, we had had 12 political assassination attempts, including nine that were successful. Therefore, the problem today is that Hezbollah is waging a war against the international tribunal that is supposed to put an end to the era of impunity in Lebanon. We have two other problems in Lebanon. We have the problems of the fact that Syria does not want to recognize Lebanon as an independent state and has been behaving over the past um, year or so even worse than it has over the past 15 years. Another issue is Hezbollah's weapons, which constantly threaten the liberal environment and the democratic process of the Lebanese political system. Therefore, these are the three problems in Lebanon today. Hezbollah's weapons threaten the democracy and stability of Lebanon. Syria refuses to acknowledge Lebanon as an independent, sovereign state. And there is an era of impunity that needs to end. Now, several states in the world, including Qatar, including Turkey, including the French, have tried to devise a new policy with Syria in order to create a rift between Syria and Iran. This has failed, and the result was more Iranian influence in the region. These states need to rethink their policy okay, towards Mr. Wozni, Syria. Can I, can I ask Syria Mr. Wozni, do you failed. agree with that uh, diagnosis of the problem? Obviously, this is not true. We know that uh, the resistance in Lebanon and uh, part of it, Hezbollah, was able to liberate the country and drive the Israeli out of Lebanon. And uh, the Hezbollah and the opposition and the resistance made it very clear that the security of the country will not be compromised. And any, uh, any compromise the, for this security of the country will be punished for whatever uh, party try to do such things. You have to remember that the, the resistance in Lebanon made a, a huge contribution to l liberate the country. Obviously, Mr. Mashnouk doesn't know about uh, occupation of the Israeli or he was some, the way he sound, he was uh, uh, negligent of the fact that Israeli occupied Beirut and the one who liberated Beirut and gave dignity to, to Lebanon, it's the resistance. I don't and, think and liberating, liberating South Lebanon gives the political party the right to undermine the democratic system of Lebanon, Obviously nor to nobody, occupy Beirut. Nobody and is force undermining and force the Constitution. The, the, force the process went to yesterday an agreement was constitutionally. That's unconstitutional. The, the minister has the right to withdraw. And obviously, they took their right, they withdraw, and that's part of the Constitution. Nobody is compromising yes, the Mr. Constitution. Yes, Mr. Al-Magnouk, can, I, can I raise that point with you? I mean, you're saying that they've undermined yes. the system, but this is what happens in coalitions all over the world. When ministers are unhappy with the direction of policy, they pull out. Isn't that what's happened here? Exactly. Hmm. This, is, this is assuming that this government was formed democratically, constitutionally, and because of the party's willingness to participate in a coalition government. This is absolutely untrue. Hezbollah's weapons in 2008 invaded Beirut, invaded Mount Lebanon, and forced upon its political opponents the participation in unconstitutional government. But what I'm trying to say is this is not the issue. 
the government for the past year has been completely ineffective, completely undermined, and actually I am very happy that it has gone. The problem in Lebanon is that we've had 220 political assassinations. I don't think there's any country in the world that can suffer from 220 political assassinations and not want the end of the era of impunity. Hezbollah today is accused of assassinating the Prime Minister of Lebanon. They're trying to undermine the international tribunal's process by overthrowing the government and trying to form another one. If they can do it democratically, then please, they should be, uh, they should do that. But the problem in Lebanon is political assassinations. The problem in Lebanon is Hezbollah's weapons undermining democracy, undermining the elections, undermining the government formation process, and all of these things. And this is the main issue in Lebanon. I very much recognize Hezbollah's role in liberating South Lebanon. But every liberation movement in the world, after liberating the occupied territories, became a disarmed democratic political party. What Hezbollah wants to do in Lebanon is use that slogan of, of liberation in order to be able to justify for itself the assassination of political opponents in Lebanon and the undermining of the democratic political system. This is completely unacceptable. Uh, uh. Obviously, nobody so far indicated that Hezbollah was responsible for the assassination. Unless Ms. Mr. Mashnouk knows something we don't know at this point, the indictment hasn't come out and nobody calling Hezbollah behind the assassination. But people like uh, Mr. Mashnouk and his political bloc, they looking for sectarian strife in Lebanon and they build their reputation in having this uncertainty in the country. Uh, the fact that uh, Hezbollah how, how, and the resistance. We're the weaker party. The we're the party that has Lebanon no weapons. We're the party whose city was invaded. Can I jump in there? Uh, I know we're all interrupting each other on these sectarian. satellite links, which is a little bit of a problem. But Mr. Wozni, can I just ask you this question? which is this tribunal is not just anyone's tribunal, it's the United Nations. It's all the countries of the world. What's wrong with them uh, being the tribunal to investigate what was clearly uh, a, a crime that took place here nearly six years ago? Obviously, if it was, if it, this international court or tribunal, it is the United Nations, then I think Hezbollah and the resistance would not have a problem. This actually, this tribunal, the way it's coming out, it's a front for the United States and Israel to place the blame on Hezbollah that he was behind the assassination. We know who there is false witness. Saad al-Hariri admit there was false witness been manufactured by his political bloc. They are undermining the real truth and they just want to point squarely the blame on the resistance and the role of the resistance so they cannot what the Israel and the United States could not achieve in 2006. They trying to thinking they can try to get it right now. We have a prime minister or ex prime minister who actually did not do anything for Lebanon. For the past 12 days, he only was here for 24 hours. For all his time in power, he was traveling around the world, not taking care of the business of the country. He was being actually <laughs> dictated by uh, Obama and Clinton and, 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 and other intelligence around the world how to go about running the country. It is time to have a prime minister who look at the interests of the people and has his heart on the dignity and the democratic system of Lebanon, and he take the business of the okay, people well, let's get inside to the issue Lebanon. Of the prime minister now. I'd like to find out from each of you what do you think should happen uh, there, uh, Mr. Al Makhnouk. Uh, who should be the next prime minister? Should it still be Prime Minister Hariri? Well. Uh, Prime Minister Hariri up till now represents the majority of the Lebanese population through the majority in parliament. If the opposition actually manages to capture a majority in parliament, then they can elect a different prime minister. But it's, it's, it's funny because I don't think anybody in the world would trust Hezbollah and its allies speaking about democracy. When two, when two years ago, March 14th forces had a majority in parliament, Hezbollah threatened an invasion of the city if they 
um, elected someone to the head of parliament that's not from Hezbollah or Amal. So it's a double-sided policy. But again, I, I don't think this is the main issue. The main issue is that the international community needs to rethink its failed Syria policy. And they need to pay attention to the fact that the Lebanon is an occupied state. It's politically occupied by Hezbollah's weapons. There is no other state on planet Earth that actually managed to have a functional democracy work alongside an actual militia. So this is, the, if they can elect someone else, let them do it. But I think the real issue in Lebanon is not the government that has been disabled for the past 12 months by the very idea of a coalition government between two opposing parties that also doesn't exist anywhere in the world. The issue is Syria is partly and majorly responsible for what's happening in Lebanon today. And Hezbollah is undermining not only the end of political and assassination impunity in Lebanon, but also undermining the entire political system by uh, holding on to its weapons and making sure that these weapons are the main, uh, are the main unit in uh, the, the political process and the political system in Lebanon. Mr. Wozni, can I get in there and get your view on how things are going to develop from now? Who do you think will end up being Lebanon's prime minister? Well, I think it's too early to, to speculate who's going to be uh, the new prime minister. But one fact is going to be the, one, the next prime minister who's going to be supporting for the democratic system, who take his orders that represent the interest of Lebanon, the Lebanese people, not the one who seek advice from the United States and its allies who actually uh, harm the interest of Lebanon, the one who support the resistance in, in Lebanon and value its contribution and, uh, to, to the country and what achieve and what will be able to achieve considering the threat that Israel still represents to Lebanon. Uh, we've seen what the Israeli are capable of doing. They're destroying uh, the Quds. They're destroying the, the West Bank. We have the whole world uh, pushing for negotiation. If we don't have that resistance, uh, we don't have that, uh, uh, you know, independent in Lebanon because Israel, Israel known to have aggression against uh, other country. So uh, that's, I think, the basic guideline. What will be the shape of the new prime minister? If Saad al-Hariri decided to uh, change his, his rhetoric and his attitude, I think there is room to, 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 to ha to, I think, for to, to, to be back as a prime minister. But at the status quo right now, I think uh, it's still very uncertain how the new government uh, will be formed. And most likely, we're probably going for a stalemate for a, a while. Now, Mr. McLuke, I know that our viewers around the world don't necessarily follow this all very closely. Tell us about this UN tribunal and what happens next and what we're expecting in the coming weeks. Well, the UN tribunal was formed based on the demand of the Lebanese people in 2005. After the assassination of Prime Minister Hariri, um, the Lebanese got fed up of the political uh, process being tamed by political assassination after political assassination. And it just so happens that every time there's a politician assassinated, it's from the side that is anti-Syrian, that is anti-Hezbollah. The United Nations back then, supported by the international community, decided to found an international tribunal under international law to make sure that for the first time in the history of Lebanon, there is an honest and fair and legitimate and legal attempt to end the era of impunity so we can live just like every other country in the world, in a democratic process where people who win the elections can actually form a government. Now, today, the main issue is not who gets to be the next prime minister. I, I believe it is absolutely impossible for anyone to elect um, a prime minister other than Saad al-Hariri because he still remains the legitimate and legal representative of a majority of the Lebanese people. The main issue today is not the government. Therefore, I am not certain that even efforts will take into consideration the formation of a government. The main issue today is the international tribunal, the end of impunity, Hezbollah's weapons, and making sure that the Syrians 
are able, after 40 years of undermining Lebanese sovereignty and independence, are able to come to terms with the progression of history and recognize that there is a state on their borders that is also Arab, that happens to be a weaker and a smaller state, but they, that they have to live side by side by the, with the state, respect its sovereignty, respect its independence. There is a fear in Lebanon that Hezbollah, just like it did in 2008, would use its weapon to alter the status quo and try and impose a new agreement on Saad al-Hariri just like they did in 2008. There is a general belief... OK, well, in, I want to ask Mr. Wozni about sports. that. What will happen when that tribunal comes up with its indictments? If it indicts members of Hezbollah, how are they going to respond? And is it possible they might respond with force? Well, obviously, uh, if the indictment come any time and they expect it any time, we will we'll not have a government that will uh, coordinate its work with this indictment. Uh, the new government, they can investigate the real truth, not the fabricated witness that was put by a major political uh, individual in Lebanon. Because the whole issue in Lebanon, when uh, the uh, former Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri was asked to question the false witness that he admit there were part of the process that fabricated the evidence, he declined to uh, go to the Lebanese court to investigate that issue. So far, we know that these this indictment will not be based on fact. It's based on conspiracy and fabricated evidence in the merit. It will not stand in its ground because they're all the basis of the, of, the, of the court will be baseless because there is no support or evidence that is sta stand behind we, this we've indictment. Heard, we've heard, so we've it heard, is tainted We've heard the same story. We've heard the same story Can I just ask Yugoslavia. you now about the regional dimension yeah. to all of this? Because we know that politics here in Lebanon is never local. In fact, nearly everything here has a regional element, an international element. What is your take on what's going on behind the scenes and what pressure is being brought to bear uh, on the different blocks? Well, firstly, I'm, I'm not surprised by, uh, by what is being said because we've heard the same arguments in Yugoslavia when Milosevic mass murdered people. We've heard the same arguments in Sudan. Every person accused rightfully of committing a crime will naturally say that this international tribunal is politicized, it's American, is it Israeli, etc., etc. So this is an argument that's been heard all over the world and that no one actually takes seriously in the international community on a regional level. There was, there was a belief. Um, with the Qatari government, with the French government, with the Turkish well, government, you even the United States. With Obama, with Obama, with, with, with Obama, 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 with that you are in. Faiz Karam, who's the leader, the main leader in the Free Patriotic Movement, headed by Michel Aoun, allied with Hezbollah, is the biggest and most dangerous Israeli agent in Lebanon. I think it's absurd that we keep referring to Israel to justify political assassinations in Lebanon. So the you, main you issue admit on the that Israeli, is the fact that these, Israeli these, agent working in Lebanon are trying to sabotage course, the political Israeli system and committing assassination. Country. And for your for your information, some of the assassination in Lebanon has has connection with Al Qaeda, and and there is others has Israeli hand. But your government and your group uh, that, that you that belong is, that to that is absolutely they absurd. They refuse to you investigate no the false witness who that fabricated the, the evidence. So they want I know we're not going to get you to agree here. Uh, I'm afraid we have uh, no more time. This is uh, a, a very uh, important subject, but we could continue the debate for hours and hours and hours. Thank you, though, to our two guests who've joined us today on Inside so Story. We've had Salah al Mahnouk in Beirut and also here in Beirut, uh, Kamal Wozni. Thanks to you, too, for joining us here on Inside Story. What do you want us to discuss next? What do you think of the program? Inside Story at aljazeera.net. Bye from Beirut.